three. We're going to move up. Don't let anybody up. Let's let them through back there. Open it. Let them come in. Let them come in. Fine. Well, I'll do good. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll give me attention just one minute, I want to say, first of all, and as governor of our great state, this is the finest crowd that the First Lady has ever had in, in the South, I think. We're mighty happy these people in Waco. I also want to say that it's great to be in Waco and Ware County. We've got some of your distinguished citizens aboard, aboard the Lady Bird Special. And at this time, I would like to call their names out so that you'd know who's representing you up upon this train. We've got Mayor Tom Gaddis and Ms. Gaddis aboard the train. We've got Mr. Ray Willingham, Ms. Ray Willingham, Roy Bonds, and Ms. Bonds. We've got Aaron Johnson and Ms. Johnson. We've got Raymond Cooper and Ms. Cooper. We've got Clyde Coventry. We've got Mr. J.W. Kirkland. We've got Jerry Babson and Ms. Bar Babson. We've got Mr. and Ms. Jimmy Walker. We've got Mr. and Mrs. Baker McGee. We've got Ms. Laura Lee Sparrow, and we've got your representative Francis uh, from Blackshear over here in Pierce County, Francis Houston on the train. So let's give them a big hand because they've been riding this train with us. And now, let me tell you a little bit about the train. Give me attention just a few more minutes. This train started out two days ago, the Lady Bird Special, in Alexandria, Virginia. And Lady Bird Johnson has been riding this train through the states of North Carolina, South Carolina, and now through the great state of Georgia. She's been aboard this train now for two days. And of course, we are proud to have her here in Georgia. This lady who comes to us, who honors us in this great state today, is a southerner. She was born in Texas, raised partially in Alabama. She comes to us as one who knows us, one who understands us, one who is true in the Southern tradition, and one who we all appreciate because she speaks our language and she knows our ways. And today, today down here in Waycross and Ware County, I've got a very fine Georgian that I want to present to you who's going to introduce her. And I want to tell you a little bit about her. First of all, she raises more hams in Georgia than any other person, so I think you know who I'm about to present to you. She comes to us as a great Georgian, a great person that we all love and revere in this state, and I'm going to present to you now one of Georgia's greatest ladies, the wife of our junior United States Senator, Mrs. Herman Talmadge, who will in turn present Lady Bird Johnson. Thank you, Governor. 
It's just wonderful to be back in Georgia, and particularly down here in Waycross, Georgia, with my people. You know, yeah. Hammer and I have had to stay in Washington most all of this year, and it's always a happy occasion when we get home. And when you can't get home, the next best thing to be being at home is to be made to feel at home. And Mrs. Johnson and her fine husband have been that sort of friend to Herman and I ever since we've been in Washington since 1957. And it's wonderful to see that you are going to join me down here today in making her feel at home. And it is with great pride that I present the most capable and gracious First Lady this country has ever known, Mrs. Lyndon Johnson. Cross. This is a wonderful day, and I thank you for coming out. I thank the bands and all the mamas and papas and children. I've had a wonderful time traveling across your state with your able young governor and his wife, Governor and Miss Sanders. Herman and Betty Talmadge are two of our closest political and personal friends. And And I'm glad to have Betty at my side to help guide me through Georgia. In the years that my husband has spent in the Congress, his way has been helped and directed and guided by two of your able members of your delegation, Carl Vinson and Dick Russell. Two Those two have done so much to help shape the defenses of this nation. Now, some of y'all might be wondering what I'm doing making this trip. It's easy to explain to you. I spent all the summers of my childhood, from the time I was five years old until I was 21, in your neighboring state of Alabama. My grandparents, my husband's great-grandparents came from your state of Georgia. We have ties and closeness with this part of the world. We think we have some friends down here. And we wanted to say to them that we value you, we respect you, and we need you and appreciate you. About 10 months ago, on as tragic a day as this nation can remember, my husband came into the office of the presidency of all of you. And since then, his major aim has been what I think is what concerns all of you all the most. One, keeping this nation at peace. Backed up with strength, he puts it into a nutshell this way. He says, our guard is up, but our hand is out to the nations of the world. And that's what I think every mama and papa and every young person in this country is thinking about first is peace. And then next, economic prosperity for our country. And I believe he's kept it on a pretty stable course of that because, well, since 1960, your state of Georgia, the average per capita income has gone up $255, and that's $23 more than the national average. And I don't think, I, I just am obliged to remind y'all that those have been democratic years. <laughs> the president has brought with him to the White House many lessons of the past learned in depression and war and handed down from his southern forebears who pioneered in the Southwest. It is that, more than anything, that lies behind the programs he has fought for 
what he calls the requirements of the great society. Because the third thing that he has always on his mind is trying to figure out practical, compassionate ways to help those in America that are still in need. And so I want to say to you all that as we go further down the road on our whistle stop through this wonderful country, and as November the 3rd approaches, it's everybody's right to make up his own mind about who he thinks has the strength and the character to lead our beloved country. I'm proud of his record. I believe there are many of you all who are in favor of it. And I leave it to your good judgment with a happy heart. Thank you for coming out. I'm not about to forget Lucy. She wouldn't like it at all if she didn't get to meet you. <laughs> but I, 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 something was just handed to me that I am mighty happy to see because this means that your paper has confidence in my husband. Waycross Journal, Harold, First Lady, comes to city seeking support for LBJ. And then... And then it goes on, the, the governor says, it goes on to give him an endorsement. And may I say thank you. <laughs> and now, and now I want you to know, because I see a lot of young folks in this crowd, I want you to know our young daughter, Lucy Bain. When the governor spoke a few minutes ago and said that he believed that this was the largest crowd that we had seen since we had started on our whistle stop, he was no exaggeration. This is a tremendous turnout, and we're thrilled to death. But I'm especially thrilled because I've seen so many young people here today taking an active interest, and I thoroughly and fully realize that many of these young people who've taken an active interest may disagree with me, but the way that they disagree with me and the responsible way that they've handled themselves can't help but impress me. And I just would like to say that I'm proud of the kind of young people here in Georgia who realize that they have an extra special opportunity and that they have the right to vote a little bit earlier than most of us do at 18 rather than at 21. And I'm thrilled to death. that they have taken this responsibility into their hands with a desire to reason, to look at the issues, to weigh their minds, and then to make their choice. Because I believe that they realize as fully as I do that we may make a choice today by voting. But tomorrow, we are going to have to be the leaders of this country. And the choice we make today depends on the kind of situation we will have tomorrow in our hands. Thank you very much. And now I want to present to this audience one of your own, one of the fine, outstanding congressmen in the United States Congress, the Honorable Russell Tootin and his wife, who are here. I'd like to... I just want you to know that I appreciate the courtesy and the wonderful welcome you've extended the First Lady of our land. And now we want to ask the mayor. I think the mayor of Waycross has a little memento, a little gift he'd like to make to the First Lady. We'd like to ask Mayor Tom Gaddis and Commissioner Aaron Johnson if they won't come forward and uh, perform this part of our ceremony here in Georgia. Ms. Johnson, as a token of our appreciation that you chose to stop in our fine city, and for this fine people who are gathered here today, I would like to present to you at this time a sterling silver necklace with the city seal of Waycross attached, and I hope that you will keep it and always remember your visit to Waycross, Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Cousin Ladybird. <coughs> we are so glad to have you in Waycross today. And a little token of the good people of Waycross and Ware County, we want to present you these rolls from Texas. And now, friends, we have some other distinguished guests that I want to introduce. And first of all, there's one that I'd better introduce, so I won't be able to get off this train tonight. I want to present to you the First Lady of Georgia, Miss Betty Sanders. Ask her if she won't come forward. <laughs> you know, it's great, it's real great to have a First Lady of our land who can get up here and say you all and say it just like we do down in Georgia. And it's great to have on this train some other good Democrats and some good, fine, outstanding public servants. And I want to introduce three outstanding Democrats who are on this train and ask them if they won't have a few words to say to all these fine Democrats down here in Waycross and Ware County. I want to first present to you the Secretary of Commerce, that great Democrat from up in North Carolina, Secretary Luther Hodges, who's on the train. Ask him if he won't say a word. Thank you very much, Governor Sanders, and this is a wonderful crowd here in Waycross. I love Georgia, and I'm glad to come here and pay my tribute to you. I know you have your highway number one coming through here, as we do through our state, and the Bureau of Public Roads is in the Department of Commerce. We're very much interested in tourist development down here. We're also interested in farming, in cotton farming, which we have and which you have. And if we keep the Democrats in power, as we're going to do, it means we can keep our $12 billion income instead of cutting it to $6 billion, as Mr. Goldwater will do if he has his way of doing away with all the farm things. <laughs> this Johnson administration has done more for the textile industry, which I was a part for 30 years, than any administration in all history, and let's sentimentally and practically vote Democratic from Johnson on down come November 3rd. And now I want to introduce to you another fine congressman, an outstanding public servant in this great nation. I want to introduce you the whip of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Hale Boggs of Louisiana here. Governor and Ms. Johnson and Lucy and ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you this, that the only thing that uh, maybe I beat uh, the First Lady on is Georgia relatives. My grandfather was born and reared in Georgia, and I'm happy to be here today, but I'm happy for another reason. This train has been on the track since Alexandria, Virginia, and the so-called business about Goldwater care in the South just ain't so, if you'll forgive me for saying it that way. <laughs> the president is going to carry Maine and Vermont and New Hampshire. I don't think they've ever voted Democratic in the whole history of our country. Not even that great President Franklin Roosevelt, who loved Georgia so much, could carry those states. But Johnson's going to carry them. And you know what else? He's going to carry Arizona. You know who comes from Arizona? <laughs> And do you have any doubt that he's going to carry Georgia? You know, of course not. Then in his southern strategy, the strategy is to put LBJ back in the White House where he belongs for the benefit of every American. Thank you very much. And now, last but not least, I'd like to introduce to you a former governor of our great sister state of Tennessee, the Honorable Buford Ellington, who's also on this train with us. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Sanders. As your neighbor, I hope you'll think about this in the next four weeks, that as a businessman with industry moving toward the South, that with the great industrial growth that we have, that you'll remember it's under the Democratic administration. As a farmer, that you'll remember, too, that we are depending on you to go Democratic. Thank you. <laughs> 